Hey, hey, what's up? Once again, welcome to NBA Enclosure. So, today's video, AGM batteries. AGM batteries and off stator. I'm trying to make it concise to the point. I might have to break this video up into a segment each one. So, alternator. What does alternator do? An alternator powers the electrical needs of your vehicle. Alternators come with alternator rating, which is amps. Uh, most cars between 90 and 135. Trucks are between 135 and 180. Diesel trucks are 180 up to 260. On average, I mean, they, they is exception to the rules, so please don't comment and tell me, hey, man, I got this. I understand, but I'm just saying on average, for the most part. On your alternator amperage, I want you to understand something about amperage and wattage. Number one, for every 100 watts, it's 10 amps. For every 100 watts, it's 10 amps. Basically, for every 10 amps, for every 10 watts, it's one amp. For every 100 watts, it's 10 amps. So if you have an alternator that's rated 135 amps, you can, you can power a 1300 watt amplifier. Why? Because for every 10 watts, it's one amp. So you divide 30, one, 135 amps by 10. You got a 150 amp alternator. That's a 1500 watt amplifier that it can power. You got a 200 watt amplifier, I mean alternator. Then that's a 2000 watt amplifier that it can supply. If you got a 250 amp alternator, then that's a 2500 watt amplifier that it can power. But here's a catch. Your alternator was designed to supply the vehicle needs with some left over in case you add accessories. I don't know, microwave, uh, whatever you add. Uh, whatever accessory that you add. Some cars, the, alt the alternator rating is just enough supply the vehicle needs. But they always, for the most part, leave you at least 50 to 60% more left over. So, meaning that if you had a, I say you got an amplifier that's rated, you got an alternator. There's 135 uh, uh, amps. I say you divide that by four, you get 33 amps. 30, 50%, 50%, so that's four times three, 3375 times four is equal to 135 amps. At least 40 to 50% of your alternator rating is supplying the vehicle's needs at least 50 to 40 percent the rest is just in case and this is on average with most manufacturers the rest is just extra excess is there in case you add something next to the vehicle but they're not thinking about cardio they're not thinking about cardio but just in case you add something extra to the vehicle the amperage is there. So with that being said, what does that mean for alternator rating? Well, if every 100 watts, if every 10 watts is one amperage, and a 135 amp alternator can supply 1300, can help power a 1300 watt system, but you only get 50% of that, how do you power a uh, uh, I say, I just give for example, you got a fifteen hundred amp alternator. You have a fifteen hundred watt amplifier. You say, "Oh man, that's great! I got a fifteen, I got a hundred fifty amp, 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 amp alternator, and I got a fifteen hundred watt amplifier. Perfect match." Ah, but remember, you losing half of that is going to the vehicle needs. So you don't have a hundred and fifty amp alternator. You actually have a a hundred and fifty amps. Right? Boom. And half of that is going to the vehicle needs. I'm going for the max amount, 50%. Which leaves you with 75. 
amps left over. All right? 75 amps left over times 10. Leaves you with 750 watts. All right? That your alternator can actually power. So if you had a 15 watt amplifier, if you only had a 150 amp alternator, you're only going to get somewhere around 750, maybe 900. Maybe. Depending if you ain't got the AC on, you ain't letting the windows up and down. What else you got going on with the vehicle as it runs? So how do you make up the difference? Now we're talking about AGM batteries. I explain. I've explained what your alternator amperage means to your system, but half of that is going to the doing the vehicle's electrical needs, and what you got left over is 750 watts. But you got a 750 uh, amps, 75 amps, which is basically 750 watts. But you got a 1500 watt amplifier. Well, how do you get that full power, I need 75 more amps. That's where you get AGM battery. And you're looking for AGM battery, you're looking at the amperage rating. Now look at the excess power battery. Uh, I don't know what model, but you're looking at, at a excess power or any AGM battery, and you're looking at what its amperage is. Because its amperage is going to tell you what amplifier, wattage, that battery can supply. I'm gonna give you for instance, uh, excess power D 3400. That amperage on that device, on that on that on that battery, is. Let's go back. Let's go back. Excess power D 3400. Now, there's a critical error on your website. Why was the critical error? Okay, here we go. The exit power D3400, it tells you the weight. It says it is a group 34 AGM. Its max amps is 3,300 amps. You're like, oh, that's what I need. Ha, 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 ha. Listen, it can support a 2,500 to 4,000 watt amplifier. Don't pick the 4,000 watt amplifier. That's on dynamic bursts. That's in peaks. Look at the 2,500 25, watts. But you said, wait a second, man. You just say it for every 10 amps, it's 100 watts. So if it's a 300, if it's a 3300 uh, amperage battery, then that means I can support 3300 3, watts, right? Hmm. Remember, forget about elect electric electricity. You're trying to always stay under what your total amperage needs are so that you can make room for dynamic bursts so you can have it's called headroom headroom so the d3400 has 3300 3300 amps it can support a 2500 watt amplifier how is that because you take 3300 and divide it by four and you take 75 percent of that and it's going to give you like 2,400 watts. And they just rounded up and said 25. Why do you stay under? You stay under for headroom reasons. So if you got the D2500 and you needed 75 amps, remember you got a 150 amp alternator. You got a 150 amp alternator. Half of that went to the vehicle, which leaves you 75 amps. 75 amps is 750 amperes. 750, 75 times 10 75 times 10 is what? 750. But your amp, your amp, your amplifier is 1500. I need 75 more amps. The excess power D3500 is in excess of more than you need. Way more. The battery by itself can power. The battery by itself can power the amplifier for a certain amount of time. So that'd be a perfect match. But now another rule comes into play. You don't want to get too big of a AGM battery because if you got too big of an amplifier and too big of a battery, and the battery is make is make is meeting the needs of the amplifier as it plays music, 
your alternator can't charge the battery fast enough. So now you got another problem. At first, when you put it in, the base is overpowering. I got 1500 watt amplifier. I got this big battery and it's fully charged because they tell you the charger we got the box. And my base is booming, boom, 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 boom. Then after a couple of months, it's not, it's not booming no more. It's like it's losing power. You think it's the sub or you think your amplifier's been went out. What's actually happening is your battery's so big that your alternator can't charge it up fast enough. So what do you do then? Well, so many rules in this stuff is crazy. You must have, you know, I, I think I'm going to do a separate video on that, but I'm going to show you mine. On my D6500 battery, which is a group 35 uh, excess power, and then I have a group 35 on the uh, other side because I got a diesel truck. So I got two AGM batteries with a lot of amperage. But I remember a diesel truck needs amperage to start because it don't work on combustion, it works on compression. As I'm playing my system during the day, my amp, my alternator rating is 260 amps. It's sufficient to charge two batteries. However, as I play my music extremely loud, a lot, <laughs> sometimes the alternator can't meet the demands and fully charge the batteries where they need to be. So at least once a week, I put my batteries on charge. I put my AGM batteries on charge. I charge them overnight. Disconnect the terminal, plug them in. Sometimes I don't disconnect the terminals because the truck's off anyway. I just cook the clamps on to my Intelli charger, put it on trickle charge, charge them overnight. It takes about 12 hours. I keep them topped off at least once a week, sometimes twice a week, sometimes three, four days in a row. I just put them on charger. Period. Just for the heck of it. And that's why my system stays optimal. So when guys actually come pick the enclosures up, they hear the, they hear the system like, oh man, that is crazy. Because my AGM battery is fully charged all the time. And I'm far under what's rated for my D6500 can support a 3,000 watt, uh, a 3,000 watt uh, uh, amplifier. I'm only asking it to power a 1,500 watt amplifier. And I told you what I'm clamping. So I'm far under. I'm even far under what my app, my alternator. If you do a 260 amp alternator and you divide it by four, I got 266 watt amp, 260 amp alternator, 260 divided by four, and then you multiply 65 amps. Half of that is going to my vehicle. So I times that by times that by two. 130 amps is what's powering my electrical needs in my truck. The rest is left over, possibly for me. Possibly for me. That's why I say half of that is going, half of, half of the alternator amp rating is going to your vehicle's needs. I'm left with 130 amps. 130 amps is a 1300 watt amplifier I can run just on the, off the alternator. Because your alternator is what's actually running your system. The batteries are there just to meet the demands when the alternator can't keep up. Because remember, your alternator is supplying the AC, your radio zone, your heat, uh, heating your seat up, heating your steering on up. The alternator is doing all that, along with keeping up with the music demands of your music. So what are the batteries for? When the bass note is so, so deep, you got to reserve capacity. Because if not, then your headlights dim it. Why? Because the alternator has to be the demands of every need of the vehicle besides your cardio system. So that's what you get batteries for. Batteries. To supply the extra demands in the music. Now you also, but you also, it also has time to, must have time to supply the needs of the battery that's powering your audio system. You see how this really gets confusing? Like, man, how do you get a good audio system? How do you prepare everything together? Because if you get too big of an amplifier, even if you get a big battery, the alternator can't supply the battery needs to over a period of time. First, when you first get the battery out of the box, it's going to help the amplifier. But after a period of time, the amplifier is going to drain the battery, but the battery can't get charged by the alternator because it's too small. Remember I tell you, my very first video, I told you, where does a cardio system start? Under the hood. Know your amplifier rating. You must know your alternator rating. You must know this. 
take half of it, and that's what's going to the vehicle. The other half is what you can, that's the amplifier you can support. You can bolster that by adding batteries, but you can't add too big of a battery so that your alternator cannot charge it. You understand? You see how all this, because this, this is all, the uh, cardio system is all electricity. The subwoofer and the enclosure is physics. Whoever got some new corner, I tell you all the time, don't nobody tell you no different. Fuck the brands. Fuck all the other bullshit. They tell you brand loyalty and fanboys and all that shit there. The subwoofer moving and making air with the enclosure is physics. Power on the amplifier and the alternator and the battery is basic electricity. 12 volts DC. That's what it is, okay? So you got to factor all these things. And put them and make them all work together. Remember, in closing, find out your alternator ready. Take half of that, put it to the vehicle. The other half is amplified that in a perfect world, in a perfect world, your alternator can supply with your cardio system. Okay? To help boost that, get your aging and battery. Never, ever. Never run a cardio. I'm gonna do a separate video on that. I think I'm gonna get out alone, but never ever, ever put a wet cell to run a cardio battery. You must get an AGM. You must get an AGM. You must get an AGM. If you're gonna run two batteries, never, ever, under no circumstances, run a wet battery with an AGM. Never. Okay? So I'm going to make a video on that separate. Play this video back. See if it makes sense to you. If you got questions, I'll answer them for you. Like, subscribe, share. Hit the like button if you like the video. It really helps the channel out a lot. Helps generate revenue so I can buy all these subs. Y'all want me to buy the test. And I'll holler at y'all later.